Welcome to Spoiler Alert, where we talk about and spoil the shows you're obsessed with. This week, Matt Mitovich and I make some observations about the final season of Fringe. We mourn the loss of Dr. Thomas on Grey's Anatomy. We check in on the renewal status on three ABC shows. And if that's not enough, we have a Gossip Girl series finale spoiler. Hello, Matt. I get it. Observations you see what I about did there? Fringe. They have the observers on the show. I like Peter the Observer. Yeah. I think it's a fun twist. And it's fun to see Josh Jackson do something a little bit different than just play Peter. Yeah, but as I wrote last week, the show is forever finding ways to keep Peter and Livia emotionally distant from each other. Right. Every season, either they're in alternate universes or she doesn't remember him, and now he's turning into like this, you know, observer cyborg type thing. I give the show a lot of rope, you know? They said they wanted to go to 2036 for the final season. Fine, I get it, because we have the cool element that Edda's all grown up. And then you get these nice reunion moments with Edda. But then when they killed off Edda, I just felt like they lost part of that big hook for this kind of standalone season. Hmm. It doesn't really have much to do with the first four. This past week's episode, and we were just talking about this, I feel like it was 50 minutes of wheel spinning bookended by a couple nice moments. For me, the nice moments sort of outweighed the boring parts and right. the wheel spinning, like you said. I really liked the final scene with Peter and Walter, Don't let me go. where he called him dad. I want dad. Mm -hmm. We don't get that very often, and when it does happen, it's got a lot of emotional weight behind it. Well, you know, we have another half of the season left yep. before the very end, so maybe it's just going to start escalating now that this Observer Peter element is in play. We're seeing all these ominous warnings about what a mistake it was for him to do that, to become the Observer and plant the whatever it was in his neck. You have made a grave mistake. We just see bit by bit he's starting to convert over, and maybe Josh Jackson we know Jackson Peter said, left. Yeah. Yeah, he's just going to be rapidly slipping away, so it'll be a question of that, how do you reel him back? because they're having a tough enough time fighting the observers as a band of, you know, four or five or whatever. You know, they can't be down a man, mm -hmm. especially somebody as integral as Peter. Switching to Grey's Anatomy, they killed off Dr. Thomas. I know, that was so sad. So sad, so abrupt, although not all that surprising. I feel like we got William Daniels a lot more than I ever expected. Yes, for me, I feel like that was the most satisfying relationship I've ever seen Christina in with another man. Right. Right. They had a connection. You have greatness in you, Yang. Don't disappoint. And he brought something out in her that was just tremendous. I hope she just doesn't go right back to Christina mode, although the previews for this week's episode makes it seem like she's, she's as nasty and yeah. angry as ever. But the, it definitely zagged where I thought it was going to zig. I thought it was just going to be, oh, he's oil, she's water, he's old, yep. she's young, they're not going to ever get along. And, you know, he'd be around, like, maybe another episode. Right. But then they really warmed to each other, and that was it was like... It really gave us a Christina we haven't seen in a really long time, maybe not ever. And I wonder if this is going to soften her stance on no babies, because we know that's going to come back up again with an issue with Owen. She doesn't want to be a mother, and he does. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if somehow this relationship maybe in some weird way brought out a maternal side to her because she saw she had this fatherly bond with him. I don't know. I'm, I'm just spitballing here. One more thought on the episode is, do you feel like they've sufficiently addressed Meredith's mourning of Lexi now? No. Neither do I. I don't feel like we got that from that episode. I thought it was going to be more than it was, and it just... I feel like we need a breakdown or something. It was just kind of, she was harried during the episode, running around, you know, mm -hmm. screaming, yelling, and then final moment where she tells Christina... Lexi's dead. I feel like we need more than that. I don't think we're going to get it. Yeah. I think that was it. Renewal cancellation fever is upon us. Three ABC shows that I'm a little worried about. Mm -hmm. Let's start with Nashville. Ratings have not been up to expectations. Damn it. Every week I keep waiting for them to tick up a little bit, show some promise, show a trend, and it's just not happening. For heaven's sakes. And it's not like the show is getting worse. In fact, I feel like quality-wise, it's been pretty consistent. Yeah. They are going to pick it up for the season. They're going to give it a back nine based on the critical accolades it's getting and the fact that it has, I feel like, leveled off ratings-wise. And what do you think about the idea that a lot of people have that ABC might move it to Sundays after Revenge? Interesting. I think that'd be a great time slot for it. Not that I feel it's getting lost on Wednesdays at right. 10, but ABC just traditionally never has luck. Wednesdays at 10 outside of Revenge. I think it's probably worth a try, you know, and that brings us to 666 Park, which has stabilized, but at a place where I think ABC can't afford to keep it. And I hear people saying, you know, give it another try, check it out again, it's starting to get good or whatever, but I'm not seeing that much buzz about it. A show with a 1.7 demo rating on Sunday night needs 
strong buzz, I think, to keep it on the air. Or at least with Nashville, people are like, you know, if you're not going to watch it for Connie, watch it for Hayden Panettiere because she is a real, you know, pisser on the show. Or watch right. it for the young lovebird. There's multiple reasons that I see a lot of people saying to watch Nashville. Right. But I'm not seeing the same with 666 Park. And another rookie series that, you know, I'm worried about, Last Resort. Again, I feel like it has strong critical support. But that's an expensive show, and the ratings are just not great. And it was just a few weeks ago we were sitting here, you know, talking about the best new drama of the season, yep. and we were saying the same breath, Last Resort in Nashville. Yep. And, you know, Last Resort's had some off weeks. I liked the past week. I was worried by the description of it that the crew kind of gets island fever, but I think they kind of executed it in a fun, interesting way. Right. I like that they're really starting to get into the mystery of what the hell happened in D.C. and who are the bad guys, what happened in Pakistan. The Navy SEALs are really enigmatic and interesting. Mm -hmm. But I always, from the get-go, and I even asked, I asked Paul Lee about this over the summer, I said, Thursdays at 8? Really? Mm -hmm. And his response was basically, there's no competition for that audience they're going after, that heavily right. male audience, you know, opposite X Factor and Big Bang Theory or whatever. But I just don't think a freshman drama should be a self-starter on the crazy competitive Thursday night. And sure enough. How frustrating for ABC. They really, you know, I think went outside the box here with both Nashville and Last Resort. Yeah. You know, they're, they are not conforming to any trend. They're sort of starting their own trends and just not really hitting it. And if you move Nashville to Sundays, you can't really plug in Last Resort on Wednesday night because then you're going up against, you know, the male skewing Chicago Fire, which just got a back nine order, and, you know, CSI, which is... You know, it still places first in the hour, so it's a force to be reckoned with, even though it's a million years old. Switching from drama to comedy, SNL tackled Homeland this week. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, and I know that the reviews of it were kind of mixed, but a show like SNL, they're not gonna, they can't assume that everybody's seen Homeland, let alone is obsessive about it. So they can't really get into the nuances of the show. Right. So I think they just went for the broad strokes, you know, Carrie's crazy, Carrie sleeps with her suspects. Bill Hader nailed Saul's voice. Nailed him. She's only let me down every time I trusted her. But the daughter, I think, was the best part. That's what pushed me over the edge. Dad, are you here? <laughs> Dad. Do you think, though, that Anne Hathaway maybe took it a little too far, and I'm not saying it was her decision to do it, but it felt like it almost became a little mean-spirited the way she was making fun of Claire Dane's acting. Yeah, sometimes when I see someone like, uh, of a caliber like Anne Hathaway do a riff on another peer's performance like that, I wonder, I, I can't help but wonder if there's some sort of history there. Did someone yeah. once beat someone out for a big role or something, and they're kind of like, you know, taking a little dig? Because that wasn't about making fun of the show, that was about making fun of someone's acting. The way she, the, her, her character her, cries. Right, and, and she's the trembling, and yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the chin and all of that. I think, yeah, I thought Anne's performance as Carrie was pretty much, that was definitely hit or miss. There were a couple moments that I thought were spot on, yeah. but the other stuff I really thought she was just off base with. But I wish Saturday Night Live would do more of that, like spoofing actual TV shows. Yeah. They used to do that a lot more back in the 90s and the 80s. Yep. It was almost like a, a bi-weekly thing. Now they just never do it. So when they actually, you know, do a name brand like Homeland, I thought it was a lot of fun. Before we go, a little Gossip Girl series finale scooplet. I'm hearing from my sources that we will flash forward in the final sequence of the episode. Oh, we love it when shows do that. I love it. And yeah. it's not a big surprise. I think everybody sort of assumed we speculated as much. Plus it gives you a chance to pull the rug out from under a fan base. Yes. Because you get to end in real time with a happening. Sort of like what Dawson's Creek did. Where yeah. it's just, yes. Then you flash forward and say, you know what? A didn't happen. Dan and Blair are married with six children. You know, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but, and I actually don't know what's going to happen in the flash forward, but I, I am hearing that there is going to be one. Which... And we're getting a cameo from your buddy back there, right behind you, Kristen, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell, yes. Do we think she's Gossip Girl? I, no. I don't think so. I think that would be a cheat. I think maybe they could have her uh, almost like reading from a Gossip Girl blog page. Yeah, to just maybe just like a cutaway, a quick shot. To kind shot. of establish why we've been hearing her voice all these years. Oh, okay. We haven't been hearing the voice of Gossip Girl. We've been hearing the voice of someone reading Gossip oh, Girl. Oh, interesting. Okay. There yeah. we go. I solved it. Nice. You're welcome, well Josh done. Schwartz. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Always a pleasure. And let's make small talk while the credits roll. Let's talk about the fact that the Macy's Bray this year is going to have a pop Smurf balloon. I know. I saw Did that. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I saw the picture in the post yesterday. They were testing them out at the Meadowlands over the weekend. That photo op has to happen. Well, you know, I Maybe carried one of the regular media? Smurf balloons in the parade. Okay. So this is old hat. This here. is old hat. Hi, I'm Allison Bridge. And I'm Joel McHale. And subscribe to ENT TV. It's just ENTV for all your entertainment news. No, it's E E N T V. It's just E N T V, so whatever. It's E N E N T E V E. Unless it conflicts with any thing channel or company we work for. I'm Allison Bridge. Signing off.